Hey guys, so did you enjoy that uh, Companion Rose special? What? It was a Doctor Who special? Uh, uh, are you, are you, are you sure? Are you sure? Because, I mean, this thing just seemed to, to just fall around this person right here. I swore it was the Companion Rose special. It was a Doctor Who special? 60th anniversary special? Okay. So. They just can't help themselves. Not everyone hates the special because of trans people. Are there some who hate it because of the trans uh, whole identity there? Sure. But bad writing plays a huge role but easier to blame them than own up to that. So this person, in, in the show, their original name is Jason, but they're a strong woman now, so they go by the name Rose. Real clever there, guys. And we already have a Rose. A more talented, not-so-freaking-preachy Rose. And I prefer that Rose over this Rose any day. But... We have Rose, who, you may not know this, but they're transgender. And the entire episode goes out of their way to let you know that. Oh, my beautiful daughter. My daughter. Rose being followed by a couple of street toughs calling them Jason. Ooh. Ooh, dead naming. Oh, God. They're literally, they're literally genociding them right there on the street as they're trying to go home. Just... The massacre that was happening. You have... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the pronoun... You're assuming the pronouns are he? Oh, right, of course. What, you, what are all your pronouns? He, she, they? Sure, doctor. Just keep getting yourself emasculated. And then, at the end, when these strong women are talking down to you, don't do anything about it. You know... When this person says something about a male identifying Time Lord, even though the fact that you actually were a female, and this person biologically still is not a female, just go along with it. Just, oh, you're right. I should just, you know, I should do my homework and, uh, you know, educate myself. Now, you see with Donna, Donna's character was written in a way to where she could be obnoxious, but still be good. She was a fun companion. You know, she she kept the Doctor in his place. Look at, you know, Fires of Pompeii, one of the best episodes of that era, so much so that they brought that whole little bit back for Peter Capaldi. That, you know, he's wondering why he looks the way he does. It's like, where is this face? Where have I seen this face before? And then he remembers Pompeii. It's a great scene that the, the scene where he's on the TARDIS and he's like, I, if I could change history, I could, you know, I would do it, but I can't. And she's crying, you know, Donna, she's like, you know, I'm not saying save the whole town, just save someone. And it was good. This character, their entire fucking personality is that they're trans. Is that they're fucking trans. And that is not a good character. It is a shit fucking character. And the worst part is people applaud it. Oh, I don't care that it's a bad character, but oh, representation. And of course, it's the people not actually watching the show, you know, as a fan. It's usually critics and people, the weirdos on Twitter. Like, oh my God, I've never seen the show, but diversity, inclusion, yes. Oh my God, I'm creaming my fucking panties right now. But I'm sure you're wondering what Russell and uh, this person have said. Here's Russell's response, because we all know he's got real bangers. You know, when you have valid criticism, he basically just says, cry harder. Yeah. Real mature there, Russell. You're how old now? Or maybe you should cry harder, because people are just tired of the freaking in-your-face political bullcrap. Last time it had subtlety. You know, Captain Jack. Wasn't Captain Jack part of Russell's era? Captain Jack I love. I love his character. Most people do. So much so that Captain Jack got his own spinoff in the form of Torchwood. But sure, keep acting like we hate characters like that. 
No, we just hate crappily written characters like that. Captain Jack wasn't his sexuality. That wasn't just who he was. Captain Jack's character was actually kind of tragic. The guy couldn't die. Imagine not being able to die. Blasted apart, ripped in half, shot in the head, falling high off cliffs. You can't die. You just can't die. But then, at the end of his life, you know, he's the face of Bo, and after being torn apart and all these terrible things, he gets to die next to the Doctor. And it's beautiful in a way. But people love Captain Jack. The guy wanted to fuck everything and everyone. But homophobia and transphobia happens when it's something you've never seen before, despite the fact that it's all over now. Comic books, video games, TV shows, movies, you name it, it's there. It's right there. You can temper that reaction and change it when you introduce these images to people happily and normally and calmly when they're young. Then it just becomes normal. Well, I probably wouldn't pick those words because it kind of sounds like something else, but sure, we'll go with that. Yasmin Finney. Yasmin Finney is this stunning, brave woman right here. And I'm sure she is in no way like her character. I think representation is so important. Like, if I had a rose growing up, it would be a completely different story, I think. I think representation is what we need and what the younger generations need to feel like they can do it too, you know? You know, back in the olden days when women didn't exist, or trans people didn't exist, or gay people didn't exist, it was just straight white men. You know, even in movies, it was just straight white men. You know, the females were played by straight white men. You know, we didn't have any powerful... Uh, independent females. We didn't have any gay characters. We didn't, no. Nathan Lane who? What? Uh. Jeez. Can't imagine why people didn't like it. This special got... 5 million views as opposed to the 50th anniversary which got 10 million this was fun and exciting this was just preachy this was just basically the companion rose special this had david tennant matt smith and the amazing john hurt as the war doctor you had freaking zygons going on you had gallifrey coming back you have this amazing, awesome story, well-written characters, plenty of females, and you had a good, fun time. When you look at an anniversary special, this is what you would think of. This is you just getting sitting, sitting there getting preached to for an hour. Every scene, oh my god, my daughter, you're so beautiful. Oh, sometimes I feel like I'm not from this planet. Oh, don't worry, we'll get him back home. Are you assuming he is a pronoun? Oh, oh, right, sorry. Uh, pronouns, he, she, they. Can't imagine why people didn't like it. Oh, yeah, and of course, of course, the final. A male presenting Time Lord will never understand. It's a pity, you, it's a shame you're not a girl anymore. She'd have understood. Can't imagine why people didn't like this fucking special. And the best part is, the best part is there's there's still two more. There's still two more. One of them has Neil Patrick Harris, who I absolutely love as an uh, love as an actor. When it comes to the eccentric, you know, theatric, he's playing the to celestial toy maker. I mean, this this sounds like a part that was like made for him. And I'm hoping that it'll be better. But well, considering that David Tennant and Catherine Tate only managed to pull in 5 million views when Day of the Doctor did 10 million, Matthew Tennant, as when he was the Doctor, each one of his episodes were pretty much doing 10 million.
but I can't imagine why people didn't like the fucking bullshit. Maybe tired people are just tired of being preached to. Maybe instead of having subtlety, now it's just in your fucking face. You know, as I said before, that the, the scene with Meep and, and them talking about, oh, you know, pronouns and blah, blah, blah. If that was literally the only thing in the episode, because it's just, oh, yeah, you know, you're looking at something. You can't tell if it's a boy or girl sometimes, and maybe it's just polite to ask. If that was the only thing. But no, they go out of the way, like the entire episode. My beautiful daughter. Oh, oh, I feel like an alien. You know, I sometimes feel like I'm not from this planet. Blah, blah, blah. Just the entire fucking time. If it was just that one passing joke that had a subtle meaning to it, that would have been fine. But it was in your face the entire fucking time. And that's what people are tired of. We repeat, we're tired of bad fucking writing. It's not a character who people like because she's interesting. People are applying, oh my god, representation. Oh my god, I see myself. I don't care if it's a bad character. I don't care if I'm ruining a whole fucking fandom because the, uh, the, the writing is crappy now. As long as they're adding diversity and representation. More using trans and gay people as a shield. I think the content of RTD and uh, yeah, um, YM's message are correct. But in the context of this whole debacle, they have no footing because LGBT uh, isn't something you'll never, you've never seen before anymore. It's everywhere, obnoxiously so, and they, and they just uh, can't separate normalizing it from their religion. The message, a message. People who wouldn't have cared now more than uh, ever before and don't like what they're seeing, stop gaslighting and start listening to the viewers. Ah, yeah, <laughs> you're funny, buddy boy. Um, causing until, um, because until we, because until then, we reserve the right to not listen back. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. It's, and it's fine because we live in a world where there's different types of people. But when you're going out of your way to make sure that those characters are represented without caring about the fucking character themselves, about personality, it's like, look at gay characters. Even now, people are like, oh my god, representation. But you ever notice the gay characters are just stereotypical gay characters? Like, mm, girl, you are just a whole bowl of sugar and I could just eat you up. You are just so sweet. You know, it's always stereotypical gay characters. When do you really see a strong masculine gay character they're always stereotyped characters you know it's but sure i'm the bad guy for calling it out and wanting actual representation not stereotype uh, stereotyping and token characters but no i'm i'm the homophobe is and then again as i've said if that's the case then heil fucking hitler bitch because those words have lost all meaning, and if it if speaking up about this shit makes me literally fucking Hitler, I I'll, I'll happily accept. I'll happily accept if it means I can continue talking out talking out about the terrible fucking writing and you people hiding behind it uh, by saying oh phobis and ism. Shield up phobis and ism. Again. Audience, this is a thousand ratings. And are there some that are just review bombing? Sure. But not enough to get it to fucking 45. No. No. People just are tired of it. And once again, it's now Doctor Who is just another one, uh, just, another, just another casualty. They've taken something that was beloved for 60 years. 60 years. And they just fucking bent over, open their assholes, and shit all the fuck over it. And then when the person just, hey, man, that, that really smells, that stinks. What are you, a phobe? You an ist? You're an ism? It's like, no, you've literally, you know, like, you've taken shit all over something I like. Phobe, ist, ism. It's like, no, you were shitting on it. They're, these people have no sense of accountability. And instead of accepting that their uh, writing is bad, 
Nope, we'll just, just call people names. Well, you don't want to be a phobe as there is them to you. Again, it's uh, overused so much that if that's what happens, then... Because, quite frankly, those words mean nothing now. If you say that you're literally fucking Hitler because you disagree with the crappy writing, or that you're a white supremacist, whatever. Hey, everyone, this person's being called a homophobe because they disagree with them. Ah, uh, nice. Don't. I'm gonna homophobe you so bad. Okay. What? Everyone's gonna know you're a homophobe. Okay. Everyone's you're gonna get fired. Okay. You already you already sold me on it. You don't have to you know I said okay, you don't have to keep selling me it. Just call me a phobe and move on. I don't care. But fiftieth anniversary, sixtieth anniversary, preachy, in your face, and fucking annoying, fun. Funny, witty, amazing to see Tennant and Smith together. Uh, John Hurt as a uh, war doctor. You have strong females like Kate, and Clara, and and it was fun. And then that last, actually, hang on. That's the ending of the 50th anniversary. Now, of course, the faces look a little wonky because they're all just, you know, you know CGI'd on there. But they're all wearing the costumes, and from far away, this this is an anniversary special ending. This is an ending. You have all the doctors. You have the first doctor right there, because back then they all spawned from him. He was the first doctor. Nowadays, he's doctor number eight million six hundred twenty-five thousand three hundred forty-three. I think, you know. Because the doctor was originally a little black girl and just kept uh, just getting get experimented on, just regenerating, 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 regenerating. So the doctor is not even the first doctor anymore, and they're they're keeping it that way apparently. But this was this was an amazing special ending or ending for a special. When you think of anniversary, seeing all the doctors. And what happened in this one, the newer one? The doctor gets lectured about how he's a male presenting time lord and he'll never understand how a woman is. Despite the fact that his previous, uh, you know, version was a female. Can't imagine why people didn't like it. But when people think of Doctor Who anniversary specials, this is going to be one that people think of. Because this... This image, this image. And yeah, like I said, it looks, you know, there's a fucking Paul McGann. You see his headless is almost like coming off of his, his neck. Um, you know, William, even William Hartnell's and he's like standing forward. And even though his face is like supposed to be to the side like that, you know, it just, it just doesn't look right. It's almost like they just copy pasted instead of, CGI'd it or something, but it doesn't matter. It's it's still amazing. Can't imagine why people didn't like the 60th anniversary. You know, come on, just you didn't like getting preached to. But who cares? You know, it's Doctor Who cares. I I I don't care anymore. I'm done with the show. Uh, a lot of people are done with it because you know I had fun with Doctor Who. I love Tennant. I love Smiths. I love Capaldi's. Even at the end of Capaldi's, when the writing started getting really bad, and also spoiler. Speaking of Capaldi, spoiler alert. Did you know that Bill Potts was gay? I know. I know. Really, at that point, Missy was really the only thing. And yeah, you just hate women, Missy, the Master. I love that character, Michelle Gomez. Brought so much energy and just was so good. And then I think that's kind of what about with um, what people a lot of people felt was Michelle Gomez was kind of keeping it going because her chemistry with the Doctor when they were on screen was so amazing. 
you felt like they knew each other for ages because, I mean, they did. It was the master. But after, you know, Missy dies, it's like, okay, well, I know this is like really like the last episode. So I guess we're not missing out too much, but. But even the writing for, for Capaldi was getting really bad. It was getting to like chin balls uh, style of writing. Um, but I just, I just don't care anymore. I just don't care. And I'm sure you guys are like, yeah, I was a fan of like Star Trek or Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or the, but everything people touch now, these, these people just touch everything. And, and, and it just, as a great man once said, everything woke turns to shit. They're taking IPs and fandoms that they know people love, inserting their uh, ideological bullcrap, and then wondering why it's failing. But anyway, I'm just some fat, whiny crybaby or something. Again, I'm not watching the show anymore, so in the people who are still watching, I'm terribly sorry. You know, trans people and, and gay and this and that, I don't care. As long as they're well written, but that's the problem. They're not. They're used as token characters. They're always stereotypical. And instead of having a good character and 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 acknowledging that these people are badly written, they just hide behind that shield. Oh, phobicism. So if you're part of the LGBTQ plus community, I'm just truly sorry that you're being used as a fucking like a toy, you know, or a, like the carrot on the stick. Uh, or or just a, a token character or plot device. I would be pissed off. And if you're a fan of the show still, I'm truly sorry. Anyway, that's it for me. You guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.